What's up, citizens of Gotham? Thank you so much for tuning into The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. So, there's an article in uh, Truth Dig, bringing home the troops is not enough. The link is in the show notes below. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk uh, on my show here and elsewhere about Trump saying he wants to pull out of Syria and Afghanistan. <laughs> so, uh, Medea Benjamin from Code Pink tweeted, uh, that Fox News and MSNBC and CNN all agree, as do both parties. No wonder we have never-ending war. And I retweeted, you know, that war is an addiction, right? America is addicted to war. We've been at war in Afghanistan for 17 years, right? So war is an addiction. And when you take the drug away from the addict, they go crazy. They go nuts and they will do anything they can to keep the drug, whatever their addiction is. In this case, war, but heroin, cocaine, alcohol, whatever. <laughs> Gambling, food, porn, you name it. Someone's really addicted to something. They will do whatever they can to keep it. And they'll flip out. And there's an old saying I've heard from recovered drug addicts who say if an addict's mouth is moving, they're lying. So you know something is awful you know it's all about the money when MSNBC and Fox News agree and the Democrats and Republicans agree. <laughs> you know, you know it's you know it's there's there's money to be made or money's being lost when they all get together. That's that's a guarantee. By our calculations, in this war on terror, the U.S. and its allies have dropped a staggering 291,880 bombs and missiles on other countries, and that is just a minimum number of confirmed strikes. This doesn't include helicopters, it's shooting from helicopters, this doesn't include like uh, aircraft, fighter jets and whatever, gunning people down and shooting, this is like actual drones and rockets being sent, or bombs dropped. Like people in a helicopter shooting a, right, doesn't count, that doesn't count. So this is a, this is a conservative number, conservative. As we contemplate the overwhelming number, let's keep in mind that these strikes represent lives snuffed out, people maimed for life, families torn apart, homes and infrastructure demolished, taxpayer money squandered, and resentment that only engenders more violence. Anybody watching this that's been affected by one of these massive hurricanes? My heart goes out to you and maybe you've still been displaced, you lost your home or whatever. Imagine if that destruction was actually caused by another country bombing us. How would you feel? Let's say there was violent drug cartel people living, Mexican drug cartel people living in your neighborhood, operating out of a house in your neighborhood doing awful drugs and human trafficking and awful crap and the Mexican government bombed it and there was collateral damage and you lost some friends and family in that collateral damage. Would you be happy that that happened in your neighborhood or would you be like, I wanna go get the Mexican government for bombing us? See what happens when we bomb everybody in the Middle East? That the president is authorized to use all necessary and appropriate force against those nations, organizations, or persons to determine so this is, I wanna read this, let me clarify this. This is the authorization for the use of military force. We've talked about this a lot. This was passed by Bush after 9-11 and he ran with it and Obama ran with this thing. So let's, this is the actual definition of it. That the president is authorized to use all necessary and appropriate force against those nations, organizations, or persons he determines planned, authorized, committed, or aided in the terrorist attacks that occurred on September 11th or harbored such organizations or persons in order to prevent any future acts of international terrorism against the United States by such nation, organizations, and persons. What, Syria? ISIS hadn't even been formed yet. Persons he determined, so one guy, no Congress, do whatever you want. So this is, this is so vague no, we'll just call them terrorists. Oh, they won't give up their oil? They're terrorists. Gaddafi? He was harboring terrorists? Hmm. Weird. 
Here's why this is dangerous. As former Nuremberg prosecutor, uh, a week after 9-11, Benjamin Ferentz told us to NBR a week after 9-11, it is never a legitimate response to punish people who are not responsible for the wrong done. We must make a distinction between punishing the guilty and punishing others. If you simply retaliate en masse by bombing Afghanistan, let us say, or the Taliban, you will kill many people who don't believe in what has happened, who don't approve of what has happened. It's not like Germany. The, the, Germany was a country that government declared war. So we had to go to war with Germany and Japan. Let me show you some statistics of how many bombs we've dropped. Numbers of bombs and missiles dropped on other countries by the United States and its allies since 2001. Afghanistan, right? Iraq, Syria is considered an other country. That's one, and then these are other other countries, right? 2003, look at this, 2007, look at all these bombs dropped. Okay. We went to war in, in that's when we went to war in Iraq. So we dropped all those, that scared me, I heard a noise, scared me. Um, 2008, well, these are the Obama years. These are all the Obama years. Look at this. These are the Syria bombing years. Libya, Pakistan, these are the other country, the other uh, other countries. Look at this. Now we started slow. Well, Obama, Obama pulled us out of Iraq in 2011. That's good. So we kept bombing in Afghanistan at a pretty consistent rate. Well, we dropped a little bit here. Then we went to Syria. So this, this is, well, we've got to fill that gap. We can't have only one, or we've got to have more than just these countries being bombed. It's when we bombed Libya. Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State. Look at this, 2016. 2017. Now we're in the now we're in the Trump years. Oh boy, he really he really ratcheted up. Other countries. I'm sorry, Lebanon, Libya, Pakistan, Palestine, Somalia, and Yemen. Somalia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight wars. Twenty-one. 20, look at that. Two hundred ninety-one thousand eight eighty. I want to read you one of the other classifications, one of the other things that we do that isn't considered in this number. This is just bombs, right? It's in the article. Read the whole article, but this is one of them. The A, uh, let me move that over a touch. The gunships, right? The AC-130 gunships, Okay. These are the th types of guns that we use to destroy the Doctors Without Borders Hospital in Kunduz, Afghanistan in 2015. Was not conducted with bombs or missiles, but by a Lockheed Boeing AC-130 gunship. So this isn't included in those 291,000. Do you see this? These machines of mass destruction, usually phoned by U.S. Air Force Special Operations Forces, are designed to circle a target on the ground, pouring howitzer shelves and cannon fire in it, often until it is completely destroyed. The U.S. has used AC-130s in Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, and Syria. Natural resources in all those countries. A good New Year's resolution for the United States would be to put an end to the wars we have been engaged in for the past 17 years, and to make sure we do not allow the same military madness that got us into this mess to sucker us into new wars in North Korea, Iran, Venezuela, and other countries. Yes, let's bring the troops home, but let's also stop the bombing. Sustained advocacy towards Trump administration and the new Congress by peace-loving Americans will be crucial if we were to fulfill the resolution. We need 
a strong anti-war movement. We're not going to get it from the Democratic Party because they want war. Rachel Maddow, Sean Hannity, they all want war. Because let me tell you something, 291,000 bombs, that's a lot of money. People are making a lot of money from that. As Wolf Blitzer said, hey, those, those are jobs. So I want to bring the troops home, man. Let's add up all the money we've spent on all those bombs and see what, what would that would do for rebuilding Afghanistan with humanitarian stuff, roads, bridges, schools, sports programs, subsidized art, which we could all have here with a Green New Deal. We know from MMT that that could pay for it. We spent somewhere in the neighborhood between five and nine trillion dollars on the global war on terror the last 17 years. 2.1 trillion dollars, as reported by Lee Camp and RT, is missing. Twenty-two vets a day commit suicide. All those bombs we're dropping were creating more terrorists and more refugees and more humanitarian crises, which also fuels economic collapse and all this other stuff. America could be a beacon of light and hope for the entire world. Instead, we drop 300,000 bombs and we have gunships that blow up doctors without borders. Time for something new, everybody. That's why we're back in progressives. 2019 is going to be an interesting year. It is the, the beginning of the presidential run for 2020. Thanks for watching. Go to GrahamL.com or Progressive Comedy Tour is coming to Florida in January. A bunch of other dates we keep adding. Come out, support the live shows. Buy, get a, buy a, make a Make Gotham Great Again shirt. Uh, from my website, go to Patreon. You get a lot of great bonus content. You got to support independent media because they're not—they're not talking about this. And the corporate media—they're talking about why, if we pull out, everyone, it's going to oh hell's going to break loose. So we, we need an exit strategy. The exit strategy is get out and build some hospitals and schools. That's what—that's the exit strategy. And do a green new deal in America. So. Thanks for supporting the show. 